Welcome to the Minotaur's Maze, where today I'm joined by Edward Latimore. Ed grew up in the hood and fought his way out of poverty by becoming a professional heavyweight boxer. Following his boxing career, he became a successful author with a popular blog, an email newsletter, and best-selling books. He has a degree in physics, loves chess, and is an army vet, and his wizardry with words on Twitter has made him into one of the most widely respected influencers in the space, having amassed a massive following of over 131,000 people. Ed, thank you for being here and welcome. Hey, thank you for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to, to sit down and, and have a conversation with someone who cares to hear what I have to say, man. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, it's, it's quite a story. I mean, there's, there's obviously a lot to unpack there. So, you know, um, the journey from, from hood to army vet to boxing to writing to, to becoming an influencer, you know, that's a massive story. So talk to us about the beginning. So talk to us about your life, early life in the hood. Uh, obviously, we've all got preconceived notions, especially living here in the UK, about what the hood is like in America. But what was it actually like living in the hood um, in your childhood? Oh, no, I mean, it's one of those things you, you just you get used to it and you learn to, to deal with, I guess, uh, the, the lack. It's a constant lack and you develop. Your, your own coping mechanisms like you know I develop my mind for for figuring out you know kind of how to how to get what I want and or, or more importantly how to how to just get through each day and then when I realized it really helped me understand that if if you want to change a situation you have to put put some work in and if you put some work in uh things then tend to happen that that are good for your situation not bad for it but like, I mean, I, I think in terms of the daily life, uh, it's, it's, it's probably, you know, it's pretty, pretty close to what I think a lot of people imagine it to be, which is, you know, there's a, a strong criminal element that is uh, ever present. There is a, what's the word I say? Kind of, it's not, it's not crab in a bucket mentality because that, that implies people are actually trying to get out. It, it's, it's almost this pride in, in ignorance. It's, it's really making your, your flaws kind of virtues and that sometimes works, but it doesn't work if you're not, you know, trying to make a difference and move on. And, and what you, what I realized early on is that a lot of, progress that I would have to make in life was going to come at the expense of a sense of comfort and not that I ever really had one but but I think a sense of comfort and stability those are interesting ideas certainly that people uh aim to aim to acquire but they don't really mean much to me I mean they're just not not worth <laughs> that much uh in the grand scheme of things so that that's very much kind of how that how that went down Okay, so you know, well, what was the first step out of, of the hood? So you know, um, you know, what was the first thing that obviously you wanted to make a change? So what did you do to make that change? Um, you know, I think I think one of the first things that I, I did was I, I realized that, um, or at least when I was younger, you know, I always thought education was a way out. So I, I tried to do really well in school. I I, I understood very well the idea of not making mistakes like you don't have to be brilliant but if you don't make a mistake you you tend to keep yourself in position to do well so i try to avoid making big mistakes or you know things that get you in trouble with the law or your legitimate children those those are the, the big ideas because even if i don't know exactly where i want to go i know how to avoid going to certain places you know mm -hmm. i may not i may not know the destination i'm trying to get to but I, I certainly know where i'm trying to not go and that makes a big difference okay so um then did you obviously i know you got the physics degree but i think that came later later on in oh life. way way later in life i didn't even graduate <laughs> yeah so so what, in terms of the education what, what did you do and then you know where did you progress from there <clears throat> um 
well, I didn't. I didn't go back to school until I was 28, uh, <laughs> and and left out when I was 18. So there's this 10 year period of of making yourself the best version of yourself you can be, or at least trying to. You know, you know, I, everyone's kind of wayward at that point in time, and there's a lot of um, what's the best word I want for it? You know, I'm I'm I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of issues myself and i'm trying to figure those out and I, i'm not quite sure because there's no there was no guidance coming up so there was there was nothing to teach me and give me a foundation to work with so i'm, I'm really figuring out this thing as an adult kind of like you know bumping into the wall and and it's like okay well the the, the way i describe it is you know you, you're like walking through a maze in the dark and each time you bump into a wall, you kind of figure it out, but you got to be, you got to be keen because you, you can't look behind you as sun's dark. And that's how you got to move to the maze. And that's what it really felt like from 18 to 20. I mean, I, I struggled with the alcohol stuff. I did figure out some things like, like how to develop discipline and, and I changed my mindset from fixed to growth. I mean, there, there are a lot of uh, things and then that happened because of my boxing training, but at the at the end of it all, uh, that period is is really formative. I mean, there's so much in between, and then so much stuff to to pull out from there. You know, that that takes me in different places in different ways, and is really responsible for where I'm at today. Brilliant. And and, and so, when did the boxing career start? When did training for boxing start, and how did that come about? Oh, uh, I, I started fighting um, when I was 22. And, and I needed to, to do something, right? So uh, I, I didn't feel like I was doing much of my life at all. So I said, okay, let me find a way to put some sweat equity in, okay, in the, in the world. And then that's important because, you know, you want proof that you've existed. And when you try to find that proof, uh, you realize that the only way to do that is is to start working hard at something like like you want you want four years to pass, whether it be in college, or in a sport, or in a training environment. But people go, okay, you've been using the time to do something, and that's that's how boxing started. I mean, I just I just needed a way. I wanted to show something for myself. I did, I felt like I didn't have anything to show for the eighteen to twenty two years that I had been alive, so I started. Uh, at that point, that was a four-year period that passed. And then I stuck, at 18, I, you know, I tried college and fell out. I wasn't ready. But the 18 to 22 point is is where it goes and where, where I go, okay, not doing anything. Let me go and study. Let me go figure this out. Uh, and by study, I mean study myself. And I realized, okay, I really want to fight. Uh, it was well. It wasn't even that I really wanted to fight, so to speak. It was I needed to do something, and, and fighting just made the most sense. And then turns out, uh, putting yourself through through a difficult thing like that is really good for you. Okay. Um, so I mean, talk to us a little bit about obviously you're huge on mindset now. But what was your mindset like before the the boxing career, like in terms of self esteem? Um, you know, and you know your identity what was you know your judgment of yourself like what were some of the thoughts going through your mind well i mean i, I never had an issue uh with self-esteem thank goodness i just <laughs> uh my my bigger issue was was believing that i could 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 learn a thing you know i it, it's weird a lot of gifted children have this this issue it's and I and by, and I say that because they they identified me as as like you know being an intelligent kid gifted is what they called it. Uh, now that I'm older, I realize that 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 label does way more harm than good. <laughs> so, but what what they, what they identify is that a lot of kids like this they they don't uh, understand that when you encounter problems the response is to try and uh, learn and work through it. And you gain way more from learning and working through a problem than you actually do solving it. They did a great study on this, that, that they took kids and they, they labeled them based on a series of interviews or whatever, fixed or growth mindset. The difference being fixed is that you think whatever you have is what you have, whether it be intelligence, athleticism, et cetera. Uh, and growth is that you'll grow, okay? 
uh, that, that you'll respond to a challenge and become better. And what we found or what they found is that, you know, so, so they did that first and then they gave each group the same math problem that had no solution. Like there, it was, it was, there, it was a pointless problem. They couldn't solve it. The kids who identified as fixed gave up. And the kids who identified as growth, you know, they they did not give up. And that's a really important trait that people have. And that that's something that, that really developed in me in boxing is that I, I was like, okay, let me get better. Because I kept getting better and then I took it and said, all right, let's, um, if I, if I can do that here. Uh, where else can I do that? And it really, you know, that that that's where the where a lot of big changes came from in my life. That that change in thinking. Okay, so so how long did the um, boxing career last? And and you know, can you maybe talk us about some of the highs as well as some of the the lows in both results and and in mindset? <clears throat> um, I fought for I fought for what twelve years? I think twelve years, maybe. Um. Seems about right, and and the highs and lows. I mean, there there's never the, you don't really pay attention. There's no, there's no concept of a high or low in mindset. I guess uh, you don't really pay attention to that. Instead, what you learn is that uh, you you just you just keep at it. it. It's a it's persistency. That that's all it is. Is and persistency doesn't care about how you feel in the moment or how you feel during the day. It's just it's just a thing. You know, it's not a it's not a uh, a push. There, there's no up. There's no down. There's just consistency, and and I guess that's what where where it comes from in, in boxing, uh, or, or rather not where it comes from in boxing. That is what came from boxing, and then what I can apply to everything that I do. Okay, and and then after the boxing career, what what happened next in in, in your life? Oh, life's been 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 pretty good. It, it's uh, I've been working on my my writing and growing my website and and having a good time. I had been doing that while I was fighting anyway, uh, okay. because you know the, the last time to the worst time to start something is is right when it's time to do it. Like no, I'd been doing this for a long time and it grew and it developed and it grew and it developed and and so uh, it was it was very easy. Uh, but or rather, I wouldn't say it was easy. I mean, because, because easy implies that I jumped right in and had to go. But no, but you know, but by the time I stopped fighting, I've been writing on my website, on my newsletter, uh, for my last two thousand for, for seven years. Oh, uh, so, okay. so it's not you know this has always been a thing in the backdrop. I just I'm fortunate enough that I was able to to realize that there's a that, that I was able to make a career out of what I'm doing. You know, a lot of people don't have that option. Okay, and, and what, what made you write? I mean, did you have like a goal to create this massive blog and following or was it just that I'm, I'm just going to start writing and see where it goes? Like, like what was the uh, the ignition? <clears throat> uh, you know, no, it, it, I wanted to write. I've always wanted to write and there was no, and it, and it, it just so happens. No, not just so happens. I suppose there's some intentionality behind trying to grow uh the following but it's um it's the best way to put this i understand that to succeed you have to build a following with your writing with that said i also realize that the best way for me to enjoy this is to write what i want to write to put out what I want to put out and to put out what I know best and to do anything else would be, I mean, at, at, at best disingenuous uh, and at worst is just downright counterproductive. So, so, you know, that, that's always kind of been my goal. I wanted to, to teach and, and write and do that kind of thing. So it was like, okay, let's, let's do it. And we, we live in the age with the internet where you can build if you're, if you're patient and you put the work in, you can build something really worthwhile and have a, have a really good time while you do it, you know? 
Excellent. Um, you know, before we obviously move into Twitter, but where does the physics degree come into this? So at what point was that? Why did you go into physics? And, and what were some of the lessons you learned by doing and the physics degree later on in life? Um, you you got to, well, well, I did it because I, you know, when I started, I, I needed to go back to school, uh, or at least I thought so. I didn't, I didn't quite know what I was going to study uh but but i guess after some research i figured that it had to be math and if it wasn't going to be math there was zero point in going so once i once i figured that out um i went for math and i enlisted in the army and in the army my mos was was something called a uh, land combat electrician or a line combat and electrical systems repairer and and there I got exposed to a lot of principles about of, of electrical engineering and electricity in general. And I said, okay, I want to study electrical engineering. And then while I was doing that, I uh, took my physical class and it turns out that, that I really like physics. Um, and so, so I said, all right, let, let's, let's do physics instead. And that was, that was where that kind of came from. Okay. Okay, so um, was that before the writing career or during the writing career and, and the boxing oh, career? Oh, all this happens at the same time. There's no, <laughs> there's no separation here. This, this is okay. a very busy life. Yeah, so talk to us about it. Because obviously, you know, we live in an age where, you know, people are, are, are busy, but they're busy doing nothing. Um, but you're doing like three or four different things which require a lot of energy. So how did you manage to fit all of that in uh, at one go? <clears throat> Well, I got, I had a lot of help, man. Uh, I had a good girlfriend. I, I wasn't drinking either. That really <laughs> helps because uh, that that wastes a lot of time. Uh, I, I stayed really. I, I had I had purposes and focuses. I didn't. I didn't. It's amazing how much time you can find when you're not when you're not wasting it. You know. So that is is one of the things that that I think really helped that made a difference. Is that I wasn't I wasn't about you know, just being a fool. I was trying to actually be productive in my life. Okay. So, you know, you, you've started this um, writing career. So so did the blog come first or did Twitter come first or, or did they come at the same time? So I, I started Twitter. Um, well, I mean, you can look at it and see when I first made the account, but I don't, I don't like remember um, having Twitter. And I'd always had a blog in some form or fashion uh but but the blog as we know it today i think it's safe to say that didn't exist until uh about 12 i think at 1200 followers i said at 1200 followers i'm gonna i'm gonna make a blog and i had it launched i just remember that specific time frame so it's real easy for me to remember when i said i was gonna do it because that's that's the day that shows okay and um so you know to talk to us about the blog then on the Twitter. So it's been obviously a long journey, but how difficult has it been to build a following and, and how long has it taken before oh, you would say it was successful? <laughs> uh, the, successful or not, I mean, I always wanted to do it. So I don't, I don't uh, even think of it in terms of how long did it take to do X, Y, or Z. Yeah, because mm -hmm. it was something I was going to do anyway okay. or had been doing. Mm -hmm. Um it, and and the the following numbers grow because I I try to consistently put out good stuff and that's pretty much it like like there's not uh, like there was not nearly as much intention as I think guys at least for me there was not not nearly as much intention uh as as it is for other people I mean I I I just wanted to put together I was like okay I understand this content and it's great you know let's have a good time with it and, and do something really awesome. And if people resonate, great. If not, but but I, I figured they would resonate, like you know, because because I fundamentally believe I'm the most interesting person that most people are ever going to meet, and and I think you know carrying that attitude certainly helps and makes it more likely that I'm going to succeed in something like like this. Okay, and you know, well. For obviously, you know, uh, a lot of the listeners are, um, that might not know. So, you know, you, you've got 131,000 followers on Twitter now. That's a huge number. But what impact has popularity on Twitter and your blog done for you and for your life? 
Uh, it makes me a lot of money. That's pretty much uh, that. That's cool. Connects me with some people. I mean, having uh, people forget that social media is is just a a tool. That's it. And and I've been really smart about how I go about using that tool. And that tool continues to to pay and uh, connect me. So those are the, the two big changes. And then, then there's also a third change that I think a lot of people don't, don't think about is that it creates this kind of standard for behavior. Uh, because I didn't build it being an asshole, I don't, I, I, I'm not really compelled to act like one. Plus, I, I try to set an example and live by anything I put out there, uh, which is why I put it out there in the first place. I mean, it's not just, just nonsense. And so in doing so, I, I get to create, uh, I get to make myself a better person. And I really, I really believe that. Okay, so obviously Twitter is, is, is the dominant platform that, that you're on, uh, but most people wouldn't consider Twitter as a platform to build a business or to make money. Um, but, you know, so just explain quickly how you can actually use Twitter to make money and why it's so powerful compared to the other more traditional, uh, well, the other uh, social media platforms. Um. I don't, you know, it's funny. I don't, I don't know how people don't, how they make money on other platforms. Like I can't, can't figure out how a person does this on IG or Facebook. I mean, maybe paying for ads is simple. You, you create a thing, you put it out there. And uh, if, if, if you understand the marketing ideas and how to get people to engage in your writing, maybe you've done a good job building yourself up authentically and correctly. It's just, uh, it's, a, it's a breeze. It's not even work, you know? Okay, so it's, it's obviously it's literally obviously picking a theme, setting your profile up, and, and then just putting out content on a daily basis, making it engaging. But then obviously you need to have some kind of product to sell. Um, so talk. Oh to yeah, about yeah. You know, you, you create something based on everything on things that you know or things that you can do. So uh, like you can, you can't just create a product and and well rather. If you don't know anything, you ain't gonna you, you won't gonna be anything anyway. All the internet has done is is allow people to to reach out and 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 distribute their knowledge to a, a wide base of people quickly. So and then with with I mean huge reach, like it's really crazy. Yeah, and and talk to us about some of the, obviously the, you know you you make a lot of money, but talk to us about some of the connections you made because of Twitter, which. Uh, oh, we wouldn't have I, made. I never name dropped that. I don't think that's cool at all. But 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 people. Oh no, no. I mean, in terms of like you know how oh. it impacted your life, and like you know, um, what have you been able to do because of it, or what experiences? Um, I'm I'm not quite sure. I mean, I've, I've been on some interesting shows and, and got a lot of interesting people on my my phone. But but I'm really focused on on making sure that I'm the person that they say is you know cool to me, not me saying um I. It was cool. I got to meet that guy. So in other words, like you know, I'm really focused on on becoming and building myself, and then from there, people, you know, cool people just keep finding me. I mean, that that that's that is the the best part about all this is how that ends up working, working out. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, like, I've taken your, you know, your, your Twitter course. I mean, I've probably bought engagement is the new cooking a, a few times because because of the different bold bundles now. Open disclosure, like, I haven't spent a lot of time on Twitter, but when I have, you know, it obviously does work. Like your your the things that you teach, they do work. I've, I've experienced it. Um, but I'm going to talk about something which I mean, I know a lot of people s struggle with this, is, and it's the fear of what people think. Um, and and I know you, you know you've got. A book called, you know, not caring is is a superpower. Like, where did your not caring about what people think attitude come from, um, and is it something that comes naturally, or can you develop it? Um, I, I think I think we all have a different leaning towards it. I, I probably lean a little more naturally towards, um, like low neuroticism, low. I don't, you know, a uh, sense of self, a uh, fairly strong identity and everything, like like not easily swayed by by the public and things like that. And and I think when in the, so that makes it easy for me to, to live it in terms of to talk and teach about it. You know, usually the difficulty is if, if a person has the 
as a natural lean towards something, then they um, they have a difficulty teaching others how to do it because they I mean they don't know what it's like to not know it. But I'm fortunate that I you know I experienced some things that really helped me uh, have to get back to that centerpiece. And so I'm able to write about that and, and put those essays in the cool words and everything and, and figure it out. So I think that a person can learn how to do it, I guess, in other words, what I'm saying. I definitely believe that. Yeah, so this is specifically about, you know, people who who, who, who care about what people think and they're scared to put things out. Um, you know, what, what can they specifically do to get rid of that fear and, and, and just become free in, in putting out content? They got to know, remember that and, and no one's going to care anyway, usually. You leave me, the, the reality is most people who are worried about this, they're not, like, not going to be good enough to attract attention, you know? And that's really free an idea. Like, like most people, like, like, like even now, most people have no idea who I am. And I have a bigger following than most people. And I'm good at this. Most people are not going to be even close to as good or have anything close to the ability to reach. And so if they remember that, uh, just, just put it out there. It, realistically, like, like the odds are you're going to fail. And that is really comforting. Like, like In other words, like what's supposed to happen is you mess up and no one's supposed to look at you or, or care about you. And that that's really... Uh, what, what 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 really happens <laughs> like 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 it, it's kind of it's funny when i think about it i'm like people are scared to put stuff out there i'm like you do realize no one is going to care and you like you're like realistically outside of the people you share with you're not going to attract readers like it takes a lot of, and, and, and i'm not saying that to dissuade i'm saying that to put the numbers in perspective like it's hard to generate link, links and and if your life is not remotely noteworthy you know, which is most people who think they want to do it, no one's going to get like no one cares so so go do it anyway have a ball you know excellent and you know um you know, there's always this debate on all the platforms and especially on twitter you know should you have a personal brand or an anonymous or company brand um and you know i'll, I'll just talk a little bit about my experience on twitter like obviously i've had a I've got multiple Twitter accounts, but for various reasons, for various companies or whatnot. But the first one, I mean, like, like my background, like I had really bad social anxiety, self-esteem issues. Um, and in, in the youngest days, I, I really was one of those conspiracy theorists and paranoid about everything. So everything I did online was anonymous. Um, but as obviously the, the social media platforms have developed and, you know, you, you kind of realize the importance of, of a personal brand. But then there's still that, you know, the whole point of a company brand is to build it and then to sell it. Um, and, and, and it also, it gives you some, you know, well, it did for me because of, of, of this low self-esteem. The anonymous brands did give me freedom. Um, like, for example, like, you know, uh, one of the anonymous brands that I did open up followed your principles, followed your guidelines. And, and I just typed, typed, like for two weeks, I was on Twitter from all literally all day and, and within that two week period I, I got something like 250 followers um which for me is massive because the the normal account the personal brand account has only got 300 odd, odd followers and that's taken years to to get there so 250 followers in in two weeks was massive um but because of that flow state i was in you know gary tweet, gary v tweeted something i responded he responded to that and i got onto his show um, and, and obviously the, the anonymous brand had to stop there because the personal brand had to come forward um, to be on Gary V's show. So in, in your opinion, is it better to have a personal brand, a company brand, or does it not matter? It depends on what you want to do. That that's the, the honest to goodness truth. It just depends on what you want to do. Not everyone's on the on Twitter to do anything remotely like me. I mean, I'm not trying to do remotely like anyone else. It it makes sense for me because my background. Uh, who I am. I mean, I couldn't be proud how I wanted to because of my fight career. And so it just made sense to lean into it. Maybe that's not your thing. Maybe you're you're trying to build uh, build an actual brand to commercialize and, and, and a product to develop. If, if that's what you're trying to do, you know, it, it makes no sense for you to have a um, to have a personal or to have a not, to not have a personal, I guess. Or the are too ever personal, you know. You just gotta figure out what your what your goals are. Once you once you know that, you know the the answer usually becomes pretty clear. Uh, but but the the 
long end of it is that one size does not fit all, not even close. You gotta, you gotta know what you're trying to do. Okay, and, and what, what are some of the benefits of the personal brand that you've witnessed and, and what, what are some of the drawbacks of having a personal brand? Um, if you're not an asshole or a scumbag, there's no drawback. I mean... Uh, does, does, it not, does it not affect, like, obviously you've got 131,000 followers, like people will be hitting you up all day, every day, your notifications must be all over the place. Does it not ever get to a stage where you think like, like, I can't be... This is too much. Oh, well, if it ever gets to that stage, I just don't respond to people. Like it's, like, I always have. You always have that power. Like you're not thrust, and you have to stand there. You can, you can shut it off and not respond. And go do like otherwise. Like I have to do work. Otherwise, I, you know, they wouldn't care who I am. So that's really it's an important boundary to remember is that is that you can always shut it off. So like I like I don't. I'm sure that there is something I'm missing out on. I've yet to find it. So like, you know, but because for example, you know, like, like when Twitter goes and Twitter will go, I mean, well, how it goes is, is going to be a different conversation, but, but when Twitter goes, whatever, uh, or whenever the next platform comes up, I'm at Lattimore. That, that's who I am. So I'm going to go to another one uh, and be like, Hey, at Lattimore and people will be able to like, find me you know like because i own me you know you look everything up it's me you know and, and and the reality is i think a lot of times uh I, I think the closest thing to what i've done is i've become more of a celebrity in a brand i mean i i built myself like you can type my name in a google and there's a ton of stuff because i built this life and built this life and did these things and people take interest and, uh, and as i understand and learn how to play the game even more it's it's not even a question I, I couldn't imagine not like like as interesting as I am and and the life I've lived I couldn't imagine being behind something else like like no avatar could come as close to being as cool as I am it just ain't gonna happen so I wouldn't do that uh, so. yeah okay and, and, and obviously I saw some pictures recently you know you're sparring with Roy Jones Jr. Now did that come about because of your boxing career or because of this celebrity status from uh, from Twitter? Oh boxing career they, they don't care about uh, <laughs> fighters don't care about how famous you are yeah, can you can you fight that's all that matters my coach is his coach that's all that happened and, and so it ended up working out really well um and then you know I keep myself in in in, in great shape. I'm the, I'm not not the guy that said, "Oh, I'm done fighting. All right, peace." Like no, no, no. I, I I keep keep in very good shape because uh, it's, it's 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 an important thing to do. It's always been important to me. Excellent. And you know, um, obviously in America, I mean, for, from this side looking in uh, at the your clips on social media and on, on the mainstream media, there just seems to be like so much civil unrest and a lot of racism and a lot of police brutality against you know black people. But what what is the reality? Is the situation as bad as we're led to believe, or or is the reality actually different? I mean, oh, that's a good, a good question. Um, I, I can only speak from my experience. I think the reality is different. Um, but the problem is that the people here, some people here think the reality is that. So um, the, the truth is, you know, I, I've been, been pulled over so many times and so many, and in many of those distances, I was in the wrong. And because I know how to talk to people and be cool, not be an asshole, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't go to jail, let alone get, get, you know, beat on. Does that mean that, that that doesn't happen? No. Does it mean that it's a race problem? Uh, or does it mean that it's not a racial issue? I'm, I'm inclined to believe that, that all things considered now that, that there are a few, I, I'm, I'm never going to be the guy that says there aren't racist. What I will say is that the, the incentive for not being, the incentives are, are there now, you know, between social media and, and how they can, uh, and body cams, you know, they're not just, just killing folk. I mean, I, I've seen some videos where I'm just like, this is, this is wild. Um, but they don't highlight the, uh, situations where it happens to other races or they don't highlight the, you know, when there is something in, in good to happen. 
uh, or when there is a conviction or anything even remotely like that. I mean, they don't they don't pay attention to these things. Okay, and I mean across the board. I mean not just obviously to, to all black black people, but there seems to be uh, an almost you know victim mentality in in every culture, race, religion, um, and there seems to be a lot of mindset and self esteem issues. Um, in, in your opinion, what do you think is is the reason or the root cause for for such a massive problem with self esteem and mindset and victim mentality in in, in today's society? Because life is easy. Uh, it's too easy so people think that you know when something's not easy they don't um they don't do anything they're, they're not used to the kickback they're not used to the pushback so they feel like so so really a lot of in a lot of ways the victim mentality is this you know is really this cry for it to be easier right uh because hardship is is hard. I mean, by definition, <laughs> you know, uh, and and a lot of times, you know, they don't. They're not gonna get that. So it's it's not. You know, I I never really think about it because it's not because at this point, it, it's not a thing that that concerns my mentality. You know, because I, I've accepted a long time ago that you just can't. Can't change, can't mold, you know, people want to be people. It is what it is, unfortunately, for better or worse. Uh, but but what I can do is just make sure that I don't I don't fall victim to a lot of it, you know? So that's what I try to do. I try to... Uh... Okay, but you, you get, obviously, you know, you, you've got a following and, and people look up to you and, and they ask you for advice. And if, if somebody... Um, with sincerity comes to you and they're struggling with with self-esteem and, and mindset like what, what kind of advice would you be giving them to help them overcome it and, and get better uh two things man you gotta like no like people don't care like it is the most selfish thing in the world for for somebody especially a nobody like like complete nobody to have self-esteem issues because this, the, the whole issue is that you think you're being judged like like no man like you are we are one of seven billion. Do you understand if you put that number into a calculator, one divided by seven billion, you get a number so small that only the most advanced calculators are going to return anything but zero. Like, like you don't matter. You probably aren't ever going to matter. And once you once you embrace that, you can go. Oh, okay, let me stop worrying about people who don't. Like, like, and, and even let's let's pretend you do matter. You're going to die anyway, uh, and and in two generations, there aren't going to be there's not going to be no one around that ever even talked to you directly. So unless you like making it to the history books, for better or worse, you're going to be completely forgotten. So so no one cares now. No one is ever going to care. Most people are never going to know about you. Uh, and uh, so so now we know. All right. So 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 you get, a lot of this comes from this. This mentality that people really care. No, like no one cares. You're like you're not special. I'm not special. Uh, no one cares. That's the first thing I say. The second thing is go do something. When you when you do things, you tend to become like 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 you you tend to turn down the noise in the background uh, about life and stop worrying. Like like for example, uh, when you're training to fight uh, and you get in the ring, you realize a lot of shit doesn't matter. Uh, like like a lot of it. Uh, all that matters it te really teach you to put your head in the moment and focus on yourself because anything else is going to get you hurt pretty fast and possibly permanently. So you you learn to put your mind into your task. Fighting is just the example I know, but it, it can be anything that forces you to use your physical body because you can't see. Because unlike you know sitting on the internet, I can put my mind in different places. It's very hard to do that when you're training weights, when you're running. If you're learning to play a sport at a competitive level, you know that's that's what a really big issue is. A lot of a lot a lot of people, man, they they do not uh, push, grow, and develop uh, their bodies to the point where they can really be effective forces and, and challenge themselves. It doesn't happen. Okay, so. Just to recap then, firstly, stop caring because nobody cares. And secondly, do something physically challenging. Because um, I saw your tweet earlier uh, on as well. And, and, you know, you always recommend the first change you need to make is a physical change. Um, you know, oh, absolutely. 
So why is that? Why is the physical change important to be made first rather than than anything else? Because you can see a physical change. You can't see anything. You know, maybe you figure out how to make money or something, or your personality changes. But those are things. Um, a lot of those are dependent on outside forces, right? Uh, people recognizing there's a there's an element of probability. You, you might realize. Uh, and change your personality first that you look like shit, but you didn't realize that. So people still ain't trying to talk to you. But when you when you improve the first impression layer, or our site is the first impression layer, when you improve how you the impression you make on that, uh, you, you one you see what happens. You like a, a real reaction, and then the world reacts well. And now you and then more importantly, you know that it's possible to change something and do something. So, so I don't like, like, like anybody who needs, that's another thing. If, if you have a self-esteem issue, you know, the, come talk to me after you put the time in to get your body fat below 15%, getting your BMI over 25 at the same time and, uh, and learn how to groom and spend at least, um, let's say, let's say $500 at the broke low end on, on, on your wardrobe. You know, let, let's see where you are after that. Excellent. Um, and, you know, obviously there's a lot of fear out there at the moment. Um, it might not be obviously, you know, related to physicality, but mainly because of coronavirus and, and COVID and, you know, everyone's losing their the minds, losing their jobs. Like, like, What advice do you have for people that are struggling right now and, and they've got doubts and they've got fears? Like, what what could you say to help them to, to move forward? Um, you go do something. You, you got to do something. Uh, because there, there, there's nothing, no one's fear ever got alleviated by sitting still, you know, and going, okay, I'm going to figure this out. Like, no, 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 you, you have to make the fear, uh, you have to figure out, okay, what is it that I'm afraid of? Uh, I'm afraid of losing my job. Let me go get another one. Let me figure out how to make some money. Uh, that's pretty much how that goes. And if you don't, if you're not ready for that, uh <laughs> Then you you got a you got a rough road ahead because because the world is not going to stop for you. It does not care about you and what you want to do. You know that's that that's just a a fact. And people people worry too much about uh, things like that when when it doesn't matter. You know it, let's pretend you know the virus is like. Oh, uh, let's pretend the virus is like you know. I got, I'm gonna I'm gonna take some people out, and, and everyone who's left uh, won't have jobs. The economy's gonna be crushed, and then we know that you know. Well, well, why it's happening? You know, what are, what are you doing to make sure that you're, you're not vulnerable to that? What are you and what are you doing to make sure the future can be better? You know, those are the things that you that you have to to do if you're afraid, and that, that's for everything. When it, whenever you're afraid, take action. That's, that's your only choice. It's the only choice that makes sense. When you're afraid, take action. So, I mean, following on from that, so have there been periods in your life where you've been afraid and, you know, what, what was the fear and what action did you take to, to get over that fear and, and progress forward? Took action. Always, it's, it's the same thing. Take action. Take Do you action. have a specific example? Like, you know, where, when was the time when you were really afraid? Why were you afraid? What did you do, and, and what was the the outcome? I used to be afraid of dogs, you know. So I got, I got used to being around dogs, and that was because when I was a kid, we were uh, we were attacked by some Dobermans. So, so when I was a little kid, but eventually I just kept putting myself around dogs, and I, I learned to deal with it. You know, I used to be afraid of lightning. Uh, that went away when I joined the army, and I was forced to like march outside, and, and then so so you get desensitized. You keep taking action. Uh, I, I was afraid of, of going back to where I was, so I'm always working towards improving my life and, and making sure I have money and skills and ability, you know. You you got to raise the bar also for what you're afraid of and then push, you know. It, that Now it's not enough for me to be afraid of being poor. Like, I'll, I will never be in the process again, like, like ever. I'm, I'm, I'm almost halfway done with my life. I got too many skills and too much knowledge. So how do I keep making progress? Well, I'm, a, well, I'm afraid of ever having a job again. Okay, so then keep using that. You go. You got to be afraid of something, and then and then it's not just enough to be afraid. You got to take action, uh, and it puts you in in a position where you're not afraid of that thing. You know, 
and and keep moving and working towards it. Action is the remedy for everything. I mean, so that's that's really interesting because I mean, you know, you're talking about yet yeah, you're afraid of going back there, and and that's almost like you're motivated to keep striving forward. Whereas we're living in a time where people are like saying, you know, ignore your fears, only focus on gratitude, only focus on the good things. But the the fear, that's actually a, a, a very powerful motivator. Yeah, it's both. You got to have a thing you're striving towards or something you're running away from. They're not, they're, they're not competing ideas. People get caught up in thinking that you can only have this one, only have one idea and one solution to, a, um, to an open-ended problem. And that's just not the case. You know, it's two ideas at once. I am not going back and I'm going to be better. I am content with what I have, but I'm ambitious for more. I have a chip on my shoulder, but I'm also better than everyone else. And they've actually proven it, though, that that attitude, that last one, is is something that all successful people have in common. The ability to hold these dual ideas in their mind and 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 live them both because it's they it's that that's the only way you know there, there's no extreme that gets you where you're going to go it's just not possible excellent and so where, where is ed, ed latimer going from you know like what is your mission what is your why where are you going in, in the future um i'm just i'm going to keep writing and developing and growing you know um and wherever that takes me is where it takes me like the meta idea it's to always push myself and, de- and develop myself and leave the world a better place than how I found it. That kind of ensures I don't stay selfish. And and by doing that, you know, like like some of my ideas, you know, I might go back to school uh, and get a master's in something related to atmospheric science or, envir- or the environment. Uh, I'm also my fight again. I'm working on some books and it just continue to interact and grow. That's I'm really fortunate, man, that, that my life is such that I can I can live this way. Because not everyone has this experience. Now they, and when I say fortunate, you know, I, what I mean is that I, I was able to go through these things, grab lessons, and, and still be able to deliver and talk to folks. That's really what. what yeah, you, you you work hard. It's, it's not fortunate. It's not just been given to you. You know, you've worked hard. Like no, you know, we just right. But I but I could have been born, you know, in 1908, man, and, and there's no internet, so who knows what I'm doing. Um, could have been I could have been born in 2010, uh, or rather that's too early, uh, 2020. And so I spent all my and so I'm too young and I'm not working on it. And then this happens, you know. I feel bad for a lot of people who are just coming out of college when when Corona happened because then the jobs drop. Um, could have could have I, I could have not had the courage to go like I could have got I could have lost a fight or something that would have messed up the trajectory of my life I mean there, there are lots of little things that are not entirely in my control that I benefited from and I never forget that excellent and you know so just talk to us about some of the the products that you've got some of the coaching programs you got you know what, what are you currently doing um to help other people um uh, you know I, I run a group of uh, with some guys who are trying to um get their pornography control under use um i'm writing some guys that people grow on twitter i have my books about sobriety and and my original night count what other people think is a superpower where i have a series of essays about improving your your life and your self-control and and just the areas where i grew when i was my life was a bit of a mess so so yeah you know the, the cool thing is that i'm at Lattimore everywhere on the internet you can just type it in and then something will come out whether it's a website a wiki page my social media something will pop up yeah and, and you know just to add to that like i like i said I, I have taken ed's twitter courses like you know they are there's no fluff in them straight to the point um a lot of education in there a lot of great points and, and you know i mean I, I can't say like i've built a massive following but that's my fault because i haven't spent a lot of time on twitter but the times i have spent on twitter and implemented those principles they do work and and you know like i mentioned before it was because of those teachings because of what i did on twitter which got me in onto gary v's radar which is basically the catalyst for for this podcast and and all the people i'm speaking to now so you know course taking online courses can be powerful if you put in the work and i 100 percent endorse um ed's courses and you know we, we will be putting links below um they're not affiliate links so i'm not making anything from it um it's just a genuine endorsement the links will be below 
um, check out the courses, check out the website. Um, and, you know, let's just talk about, you know, some of the articles that you've got. You know, what are your most popular articles and, and why do you think they were so popular? Oh, man, I... <laughs> They 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 because they resonated with with people at some level. I mean, the the internet is 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 people looking for answers, right? And so the most popular uh, things are things that people are looking for answers to. You know, aside from entertainment, and I don't really write entertainment. I write uh, answers. So uh, the the articles that are the most popular are the ones that that answer the question, and it's 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 it it. it varies you know sometimes people are worried about sobriety sometimes people are trying to get out of porn i mean these are the things i just write about all my experiences and, and the algorithm sometimes boosts something to the top takes them to the bottom uh it's all it's all really interesting uh kind of how it works but but I, I i you know i don't pretend to know why my articles are popular because if i knew that i'd only write popular articles <laughs> Uh, I, just, I write just what I know and some things pop, some things don't. I'm always surprised when I'm always, not always, but sometimes I'm surprised when, when something gets, gets crazy. Uh, like, like my attractive male article, very surprised about that relationship rules for men. That's a pretty popular one on my site. Surprised about that one. Uh, very surprised about my porn article, uh, so uh, about Quinn porn, but but a lot of it is also you know how I'm, how I work the SEO and what I've learned uh, about doing that. So so there, there's I wish I had a, a an answer to that question, but I don't know. And if I if I if you if you figure it out, feel free to write me because <laughs> I can use that information. So I mean, from what I've taken from that is you know for people listening is you know don't worry too much about making the perfect article. Just write your content in your voice you don't know what's going to kick off it's just a matter of putting it out there and letting the market and letting people decide whether it works or not exactly you know then no one knows they <laughs> i mean it's just not if, if they knew you know guys would be i mean if they look if somebody knew they'd be trying to sell it for sure uh it's just that there's so many things to go into just right what's true to you Okay, and, 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 you know, so what would you say is the, the number one skill that you need to develop? Uh, is, is it mindset or is it writing to develop a personal brand using Twitter and, and, a, and a blog? Like what should a person who's got no experience, no confidence, they just know that they've got a skill in writing, like, like what should they be focusing on? You ain't got a skill in writing if you haven't done anything. They're, they're, it's just not. I mean, there's one thing I've come to. I I used to kind of hate it, but now I get it. They used to say, you know, don't write anything before you're 30. I don't quite believe that. What I do believe is that any anyone can string together words, whatever, and you know, because words are there. But do you have experience in life? Go do something. Like like that. That's that is the single biggest thing that will hold people back from doing anything with, with the writing they want to do is they think they can just write. Just like they can think they can just get on the internet and, and type on Twitter and be good. No, go live a life. You got to live a life, get some experiences, fail, learn how to deal with failure. Uh, writing, people think writing is, is the, a thing that just, you're going to be just guaranteed some success if you got some skills stringing together words. Anyone can string together words. What, who, what people care about is the person stringing those words together. It was the notable exception being fiction, but even that you got to create a world and a platform still helps. It's like public speaking. You could be the greatest speaker in the world, but if no one knows who you are, who gives a shit? <laughs> On the other end, I've seen some terrible speakers, but because they have a name, they command the money, they command the audience. You got to go live life. There, there's no, there, there is no shortcut. That's what the internet has done. The internet's created the illusion that there's a shortcut yes. to having a fulfilling life. Excellent. That's, that's powerful. That's very powerful. Um, you know, we're going to wrap things up. So once again, just, just tell people, you know, where can they find more about you? Uh, where can they find your content and, and which is the best platform <laughs> to actually um, engage with you? Uh, the best platform to engage with me, ooh, that means I, I check them all. My phone is never uh, dead. So, so I'm all good on anywhere. Wherever you want to send me a message, it's all good. Um, but 
Uh, just type Ed Lattimore, man. Ed Lattimore on Twitter, Ed Lattimore on Instagram, Ed Lattimore on Facebook. My website is edlattimore.com. Uh, so I'm, I'm Ed Lattimore everywhere. My, my YouTube, if I get back to making more videos, Ed Lattimore. So so it all it all works out. Uh, Ed Lattimore is how you find me. Brilliant. And, and you know, so who, who's your ideal client? Like who should really be looking you up and, and who can you help with? Oh, man. Uh <laughs> I, I wish I had an answer for that. I, that's the thing. I, I don't I don't think about these things. I'm very centered on what I want to create. Whoever finds it is whoever finds it. Uh, and I think I think a lot of people can get a lot out of me. Some some more than others. Uh, but it, as weird as this sounds, I don't create for them. I am just fortunate enough that what I create, people get a lot out of. Oh, but but okay. doing it for the audience, I don't think that can ever be a good motivation because the audience taste can change. It can go completely. If I was doing this for the audience, I'd be writing a bunch of shit about politics, for example, right? Not interested, you know, not interested uh, whatsoever. So instead, I focus on me. So I don't I have no idea who the ideal client is. Uh, if I guess if you're, you're trying to improve your mind. Uh, if you're trying to learn, if you're trying to become stronger or better, I uh, got got a different articles and different things. You know, you're trying to practice forgiveness and learn that uh, that helps too. So, uh, all kinds of uh, all all kinds of people who need to learn all kinds of things. Brilliant, and you know that's. I mean, I don't want to label this one, but that's so interesting because everyone else is teaching that you got to niche down. You got to know exactly who you are. No, idea. I am. I am anti-niche. I, I tell <laughs> people all the time, I mean, fuck a niche, man, because <laughs> you are, because you're the, you're the um product, not, and, and you're a person and persons have personalities that are, that, are, that, are, that don't fit in neat little boxes, man. I, like, I could, I did, and I think that's one of the reasons I, I have such a big following is because so many people can relate. If I was just talking about one thing or the other, okay, I'd be stuck at, you know, who knows what I'd be stuck at. But I'm me. I am the brand. I am the person. I'm, I'm, that's why I say what I've, what I've done is is more, is closer to becoming a celebrity than building a brand. I mean, I, I, I think building a brand is something you do when you don't, when you ain't got shit, man. But, but when, you, when you've done something and you have something to say and something to show and produce, yeah, then people are like, okay, cool. Excellent. Like so, you know, the, the key takeaway there for me is: look, you don't need to worry about who your ideal client is. You don't need to be worried about your niche. You just need to be worried about living your life, becoming the best you can, and then just sharing your lessons with other people. And those that will resonate will come, and, and the rest don't really matter. Excellent. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure talking to you uh, once again. Thank you for being here. Um, and any last words for everybody out there before we uh, wrap up? Ah, just just be yourself. Be your best self. There you go. Not just be yourself. And that means always push whatever your strengths are, develop them, eliminate your weaknesses over time and try to get, try to make the world a better place than you found it. Excellent. Brilliant. Well, it's been, again, great talking to you. Uh, and once again, thank you for, for being here. <clears throat> Awesome. Thank you, man. Brilliant. And everybody else, uh, we will see you on the next episode. Take care and bye-bye.